Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at Annie Are You Okay, my 1.3 kilo undercutter robot and she's going to get some upgrades, uh, mostly to do with the weapon system because going through fight footage from one of the last meets Annie was in, I found a really, really worrying still where Annie's body is in the air in one angle and the blade is in the air at a different angle. And that is really not good because it means that Annie's weapon was wobbling all over the place in that fight. And you can actually see some evidence of it out here where there is nice big scratch marks where Annie's blade has hit the chassis and that's really not good. Some of these screws are gonna be almost impossible to get out of here now. And it also meant that, that this type of thing happened where the pulley on the weapon motor was being hit and being shattered into a million pieces and that's not good because then the weapon goes down so i think the big problem with this is this stack up up the front here this bearing stack up is just bad and in fact right now this doesn't even rotate freely which is a really not good sign basically there are two thrust bearings here one thrust bearing at the top one thrust bearing at the bottom and then there is a very very small section of 3d printed plastic between those two and these thrust bearings don't seem to give a lot of resistance to wobble in this type of direction. So yeah, they are a really, really bad idea. So we're going to replace this bolt today. We're gonna to do something different with this, uh, but we're also going to change the whole chassis up too, because if I remove this Lexan panel, which is the bottom of Annie at the moment, which makes a nice and see-through, uh, if I replace this with some HDPE, not only am I going to lose some weight because HDPE is lighter than Lexan, but I might be able to run a big protection guard around the bottom here, which will stop the blade from slamming into the base plate and also protect this weapon pulley. However, the weapon pulley itself had other issues. It's currently uh, screwed on here with some grub screws into the axle of the brushless motor, which is kind of the way most people do this. But I really don't like this system and the grub screws kept failing me. So what we're going to end up doing is taking this guy and flipping it upside down so that the, uh, the weapon pulley mounts on this side, but then the whole motor is upside down so that the weapon pulley is actually in the right spot. Uh, and that way we've got three screws that are going to attach the weapon pulley to the weapon motor and everything is going to work better. Fingers crossed. Um, Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is go up to Sane, make some new pulleys because I need to machine these down from their full size because in their full size they have a little section on top of them and a little section on the underside of them as well. So I need to machine some of those down and we need to machine out a new base plate. I'm going to try and keep as much of the internals the same as possible, I reckon, um, but I really don't know at this point. I'm probably also going to replace these frame rails, try and save a bit of weight in those because while these are ridiculously strong, uh, they are quite heavy. They're about 45, 50 grams a piece at the moment, which is a lot for this type of robot. Uh, so time for some upgrades. There we go, okay, so I still have a little bit of drilling to go because these uh, pulleys, they now fit on top of the motor properly. Uh, they're actually a little bit of a loose fit right now, which is okay, uh, because they're gonna have those bolts in them. So I need to drill some holes for bolts. Uh, I also need to drill these out a little bit because the machine that we had didn't have the right uh, drill sizes, the CNC machine, so I'm going to have to drill all the holes out in this bottom panel as well. But here you go, this is the riser that I was talking about. So you can imagine this sitting in under here like this, and so when the weapon is spinning around, obviously the weapon is actually going to be, well, this is going to be lower and the weapon's going to be out further. The weapon is going to hit this if it hits anything at all, uh, so it's going to stop, it's not going to hit this base plate. This, or it's not going to hit the main section of the base plate, and it's not going to hit any of the screws that are keeping this thing together, which is good. That's very, very good. Um, okay, so that's that one done, and the pulley is almost done. Like I said, I've got a little bit of drilling to go. I've also got some spares of those. Just on the off chance they do get hit again. Uh, but we also got in some new parts. So this is the 8 mil shaft that I was uh, using in Annie before. And this is the 8mm shaft we're going to be using now. Let's take a quick 
closer look at those. So this one is the old school style and it was using these thrust bearings on here like this. Now, if I push the down on this a little bit and then kind of wobble it, you can see there's quite a lot of wobble in here, especially when the bearing is loose like this, there's quite a lot of play in this setup, which is really not good. And that is where the weapon issues were coming from. All of that wobble and all of that play is really not good. And changing the bearing isn't gonna help. So I've got a new bearing here. This is just a regular old skateboard bearing. Putting that on a bolt, you get the same thing. You get wobble and play back and forth. You can see how much I can change that just on the bolt. And that's because even though this is supposed to be an eight mil bolt, uh, the teeth on it kind of cut that down a little bit. This is where the eight mil shoulder bolt comes in because this is actually a really, really snug fit and I can barely wiggle that at all. So we're gonna get a lot better weapon set up uh, using this shoulder bolt. Um, yeah, so let's zoom back out a little bit. We're almost actually to the point where we can put any together. There's just two pieces we're missing. So also I'll show you two. This is the uh, the new size of Annie. She's shrinking down by the size of these side pieces essentially. So there are some aluminum tube in here and Annie is losing all of that side, but she never really had it in the first place, right? Cause I never actually had any electronics in there. So the internal volume is pretty much the same as it was in the past, but uh, we're losing some of that weight out of there. So I've cut some aluminum angle to do this job instead. Uh, and now we just need to drill that, drill this, drill these, and then maybe we can start putting any all together again. With those holes drilled, I have mocked up the chassis. So this is how the chassis is gonna look now. These aluminum angle pieces on the side here are replacing these big blocky sections over here. And this whole frame is actually pretty rigid despite not having front, back, or top panels. So that means those front, back, and top panels can be kind of uh, loosely mounted and the whole robot will still work. Uh, this skid plate also seems to be looking like it's in a good spot i did a very quick loose fit up with the weapon just before and it seems to be okay i don't actually have the shoulder bolt here so i can't redo that fit up but uh that's okay we'll do that later in the video because for right now i actually have more holes to drill and i have to take this thing back apart to do it so the way we're mounting the weapon motor in here is it used to be mounted directly to the base plate but as you can see that is no more uh, so we're actually going to be mounting it this way around in here and that means we need some form of plate that sits across the top here and that's what this little guy does. So this guy is the shroud for that motor. It will sit there like this and it's going to sit somewhere around there. The motor's going to go in there and then we're going to have a plate that goes between these two holes and there. But we actually need holes in here because right now we don't have anywhere to mount up this or the plate that holds in the weapon motor. So we need those. They're printed up on a little drill guide. Drill guides are awesome for making sure you get holes uh, lined up correctly, especially in parts like this, which is a hand cut part that I'd made ages and ages ago. It's very, very hard for me now to work out where all my spacings are and try and measure out from a point to where these bolt holes are supposed to be. So a little drill guide should fix that issue, I think. I also did something that some people have mentioned in the past, which is I printed up a little block which slides in through the aluminum angle and just gives it just a little bit, bit more support. In actual fact, it gives it a lot more support because that is a 3D print then under compression, so it should be okay. It shouldn't break in any way, shape or form. At least I don't think so, fingers crossed. Um, okay, so more drilling to go uh, and I think the bracket that we use to mount this guy up just for today is probably going to be a 3D printed part. I will probably change it over to aluminium or Lexan before the actual competition. And then in the future, I'll try and find a carbon fiber drone arm that does that same job, I think. But I don't have any carbon fiber drone arms big enough to do that. 
right now, so it's going to have to be just something else. Cool, so the new parts are now printed, which means we can kind of get a test run of this together. Uh, however, I am gonna to need to do a little bit more refinement because I realized uh, by doing a quick little test that I actually need to Dremel out some of the sections up in here just because these uh, sections are a little bit too thick and I've drilled my holes a little bit too far down, too close to the bottom down here. Uh, so we can fix that with the Dremel and I also need to change out these back supports to make all of that work. But that's a job for another time because right now I want to do a quick test run of getting the actual uh, motor together. So the motor is supposed to go like this with the wire coming out this side, there is a little gap there. The print isn't actually the best print that I've ever done, uh, which is kind of annoying, but that is the way that goes sometimes. And there she is, the new beast. Uh, so that is all mounted up and it looks like everything is working well. In fact, it looks better than well, because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show this on camera too much, but spinning this weapon, so first of all, Spinning the weapon does actually spin the motor. If I hold this in the right spot, you should be able to see the weapon motor spinning around. It's pretty subtle, but that is spinning the weapon motor by spinning the weapon, which is a good, good start. To the belt tension in here, it's a little bit loose, but it uh, isn't gonna come off. That's, it's just got a little bit of play in it, which isn't too bad at all. And the other thing that I really can't show on camera is that the belt is no longer moving. So in previous versions, when I spun it by hand, the belt was kind of riding one way or the other, which meant that I didn't have my belt level in correctly. And in this version, we are totally okay. In fact, it seems to be going really quite nicely. Uh, so, now what we need to do is get those motors in, get some wheels on and make sure that the whole thing is actually at the right height off the ground because if we're too close to the ground, we're gonna be hitting the ground rather than hitting our opponents. That is not a good thing. So it looks like the uh, camera cut out during that time lapse, but now we're basically done. Um, I mean, it doesn't actually look all that done at the moment because what's left is armament. Uh, so, oh sorry, not armament, armor. So there is supposed to be an armor panel across the front here, which has got brackets over here that I need to add in. And then there's armor at the back as well. But I actually found that the armor that I was using doesn't fit anymore because the wheels are slightly closer in than they used to be. So that doesn't fit. And also I uh, misspaced my motors at the back here. So they don't actually fit. Uh, the nuts that I need in here don't actually fit. So I've got a different, more cunning solution for that. But I don't have time to do that and then edit this video. So it's going to have to be after this video that I do all of that. Uh, but yeah, this is Annie's new chassis. Uh, it's only really finger tight together at the moment, which is why it's a little bit flimsy because I do need to pull it all down, sort out these back motor mountings and add in the front motor mountings. We are gonna have standoffs at the front here again, but they aren't going to go down to the floor because as you can see over this side, the tooth sticks out way further than the side of the arm here. So we're only gonna have them going upwards, which is for when Annie is upside down so that I don't uh, end up at a weird angle. I end up at a controlled angle. And I also don't end up running on like the motor shaft up here or something, cause that would be a bad idea. Uh, it just adds extra friction to the motor and also extra friction to the drive. Not good in general. Also the weapon is in and seemingly working. We're now running on the drive bolt and the weapon I think is actually closer to the ground than it has ever been before. This might be a bit of an issue if the floor is uneven. Uh, I don't know, but we'll find out, I guess. I don't really have much of a way to uh, fix that. At the moment though, I also need to reprint new wheels because uh, the chassis is just on a slight lean. If I had one or two mils extra in the wheels, it would uh, be a little bit better because it's actually 
tilting back this way with the wheels too low and the front too high. So the blade is actually higher at the front here than it is at the back out here. Although the cool thing with this new chassis is that we also get just a little bit of hit out the back here as well. We're only gonna put a four mil back plate on here. So we will still get a small amount of uh, reach out the back, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that is it for the time being. That is Annie's new chassis. There's gonna be a few small modifications to it uh, between now and my first set of fights, but that is basically it. I just wanted to take you guys along and show you the new motor mount design, the new armor, uh, the new siding design, and uh, yeah, that should be all of the upgrades that Annie needs for the foreseeable future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.